welcome to Fat News Global. I'm Nitin Gokhale, and with me is a very special panel to discuss an incident that is not so well known when it comes to uh, the India-China face-offs uh, through the history since uh, 1950s till now, 2020. Joining me today in, in this special broadcast are uh, three distinguished uh, army officers, now um, retired, but uh, were uh, active participants in this face-off that happened at a place called Yangtze, uh, not very far from Dawang in Arunachal Pradesh, in 1999, when the entire attention of the nation was uh, at Kargil and in the uh, battlefields of Dras, Kargil and Batalik in Pakistan uh, had intruded into Indian territory. And the Chinese had uh, tried to put pressure on the Indian positions in Arunachal Pradesh along the McMahon line. Now, uh, I want all of you to listen to this uh, incident uh, from the uh, participants, uh, from the practitioners who were on the ground that time, uh, starting with uh, then Colonel uh, P. D. Hanur, uh, who later retired as Major General P. D. Hanur, then uh, his brigade commander, uh, then Brigadier uh, V. D. Devavaram, who retired also as a Major General, and uh, their core commander that time, uh, Lieutenant General D. B. Shekatkar. A uh, well-known uh, strategist and, of course, uh, somebody uh, who uh, has served uh, in uh, difficult positions like the other two. I'm honored that uh, I'm joined by all three of them to talk about, uh, as I said, a very uh, little-known incident of a 93-day face-off with the Chinese uh, on the Arunachal border. So, welcome all of you. Uh, I want to start with uh, General P.D. Halur, uh, who was the commanding officer of 8th Mahar uh, Regiment, which was uh, posted at Yangtze. And uh, his boys and his uh, officers and men uh, were at the forefront, uh, led by him, uh, in the face of uh, that lasted, as I said, for more than three months. General Halur, if I can uh, have uh, your uh, first memories when I ask you about what exactly happened in those 93 days, if I can, if you can share. Uh, your uh, immediate memories when I ask you this question. You see, uh, it was a very tense uh, moment that we had, uh, uh, starting from 7th of uh, July 99, and it lasted uh, till 27th of September. But of all that period, uh, the most critical and the most vivid memory I have is of the very first uh, day and night, that is on 7th July. That was the day when the PLA made a concerted effort. First in the morning, they came uh, with a patrol uh, party of uh, three officers and 30 men and staking clay uh, that uh, the Yangtze area is theirs and uh, we should allow them to graze across the LAC. Our company commander, who was only uh, about three years of service, Major uh, Rajesh Krishna, uh, was very far. And uh, he said, uh, this is what uh, LAC is, as mapped and as depicted therein. And there is no question of uh, Chinese intruding across this line. If, if there is anything at all, uh, they need to refer the matter to the higher authorities through diplomatic channels. So that was what happened in the morning of the uh, monitor's night of 7 July. But thereafter, they went back. Then, uh, just at about uh, 17 30 hours, about just before last night, they started moving up. They have taken a position in an area what we call as depression, which is about uh, 1200 meters vertical distance from the uh, ridge line, that is what the LAC, where the LAC was. And from there, they started moving up. Those days, because of the fog, we could not detect their movement, and also because of deflated positions, we could not detect. Uh, the movement till they came about 200 meters uh, to the LAC. Our sentries were vigilant despite the poor weather conditions, and uh, we saw. And at that time, my company commander he didn't know how to react. So he, uh, but the orders from higher headquarters were very clear. And fortunately for me, the light communication was very effective. I had already moved to a bottom management posture onto the higher heights, but. Uh, not in that area per se. So we were through on a line. So he kept uh, updating me constantly. And uh, 
when they they finally he kept telling me that they are down 100 meters there are 50 meters when they were about 100 meters they got into a assault formation that is extended line formation and uh, with their weapons uh, they started moving as if they are coming for an assault it is only at about uh, 30 to 40 meters they stopped because i kept telling him that we are better off we are in our own defenses we are well prepared and therefore and we are at a high so there is nothing really to panic and our orders are very clear if they violate the lac then all the actions that are required as a soldier will be taken but till then to hold the nerves and fortunately both the officer the company commander and the men were up to the task since they had been well briefed well rehearsed earlier for such contingencies so they were able to hold the nerve despite the extreme provocation and then uh, they stopped short 30 meters uh, from the actual air uh, action control the company commander came up to my company commander they had a discussion again the same thing he said your the sangars are not to be here this is our area and we want to uh, go through so he again politely and firmly told them that this is not possible at all uh, thereafter they been purged from that they continued to deploy and by then it was already dark and they started probing on the flanks on either side this this happened at a post which is known as hangla and okay. on both the flanks eastern and western flanks they tried to force their way through because they had come in a combustion and uh, since we had anticipated the their action we had already taken positions on either side of this uh, path of this post and as a result of that their attempt to force through did not see i had a company total commander there one mm-hmm. that was the home day He did okay. an excellent job. He was in a neighboring post called as Mirala. From there, right. uh, Kiwati had been moved, and there is a gap which is between these two posts, which they tried to exploit. But our troops are already positioned there, and as a result of that, uh, their attempt to go through failed. Even okay. though they see, right. I'll so, just come back to you, General Halu. It's a it's a great uh, start to the conversation. Uh, General Devaram, uh, you were commanding the uh, Tawang-based uh, 190 Brigade that time. Uh, when you must have heard this uh, incident uh, from, of course, uh, uh, then Colonel P. D. Halur. Uh, what was your first reaction, and what were your orders uh, for him? Uh, you know, would you would have anticipated further uh, deterioration in the condition uh, at the at that point? What was your reaction to that? So before coming to Yangtze. I will briefly touch upon what happened in the 1986-87 case of the Chinese. That is the Chinese right. Taiwan case of. Yeah. That that must be covered at this point of time. Sure. After the 62 war, that was the first time they came very close to the LAC and they were trying to occupy or come across the Sulula ridges. Now that time, the entire five mountain deal under General James Singh, later uh, he became a Lieutenant General. They moved up, and all the three brigades were deployed. Completely, they were deployed and they have moved up. And as I was that time a young company commander, my battalion was deployed in Nagaland, and our brigade also came up to Sela because we have to occupy or open our defences and occupy Sela defences in case there is a skirmish. So that is the time the complete uh, counter measures were taken by the five div. Actually, the main architect behind the whole uh, countermeasures were that time four corps commander, Lieutenant General Narayan. He is the man who meticulously carried out the recce and planned the forward move. And I am quite aware of this because one of my battalion officers, that time, was commanding a battalion of our own regiment in the Hatamura area, and he also used to tell us exactly what they are doing. Because it is only after the 1962, the first time the Indian Army moved into the Hatamura region. And the Navy and the Kingdom Minister, and that time, as a quid pro quo, General Narayan ordered the occupation of the Yangtze Valley. Till I then, Yangtze was not. Till then, Yangtze was not occupied. It was only patrolled. He was uh, patrolled with the both the local grazing ground and Yangtze, and then back. Correct. Now, what, ha- what happened in 99? 
it is uh, i took over the brigade only in the first week of june okay so we have to go the brigade uh, after three or four days the first chinese patrol came there of course they came in a very small number three or four people who came uh, without weapon they came fortunately our uh, op was there and immediately summoned the uh, calls of company of weight matters they moved up so the chinese asked for a cup of tea and uh, some water so they gave them at that point of time after a few days once again they surprised after a few days once again the chinese surprised there at the anse the little more strength maybe the second week of uh, june this time they had come with some weapons but the soldiers uh, who came up to the merala op were without weapons Then they went back once again. They asked for tea and things like that. They were that time they were defeated. There is no tea and all. Then the Chinese also probably claimed mm. that uh, he wanted to send our graces to grace in the day. At that time it was refused. And finally, on seventh uh, day they moved in strength. Correct. Right. They came with the graces. They came uh, with the almost like a petal breast one of the Chinese. Came up to the Marala Pass. So the early morning they tried to put one more uh, side, push their yacht, push their bridges into Yangtze ground. At that time, as the CEO covered it, there was a young major who was the company commander. He was right. And there was a brown hill there, 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 like right. there, 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 and he yes. moved them. Okay. And uh, in the night, what happened was, and fortunately for me, then four commander, Lieutenant General Ekaker. Was in Tawang that day. Okay. He was, staying, he was staying in my brigade guest room, and in the evening he told me, "If there is any problem, you call me, wake me up. Any time you can wake me up." Accordingly, at around 11:30, the company commander gave me a call, stating that uh, the Chinese have come very close and they are in the assault formation. The officers are in front, the bases are in front, and they are trying to push through the Merala Gap. Right. Merala Gap. So that time he asked me, sir, can I open fire? I told him, uh, just hold, just hold on, because we can't open fire because uh, we are covered under the War of Peace and Tranquility Agreement. Accordingly, we are not able to open fire. But in any case, I will come back to you. Hold your guns. Then I uh, called. Uh, in fact, I woke up uh, when he checked that and asked him, sir, this is the scene there in the Dalla Gap now. The army commander wants to open fire. What can we do? So General told me that uh, they can not open fire, but we can illuminate the area. We can illuminate the area by firing the two motor illuminating bombs, very light pistol. So I told him to illuminate the area, fire the two motor illuminating bombs and the very light pistol, but don't fire it across the Nala Pass. The empty shell will fall into our own area. Pardon me. Illuminate the area. Illuminated yeah. the area. That's the time we could see the strength of the yeah. Chinese, and the Chinese understood the uh, and he warned off the Russians and he had his boats, patrols uh, written in English and Chinese. Do not cross the English if you cross, we will be constrained and we may open fire. This is sort of a screen was given by the right. Chinese. Correct. Yes. So I'll come back. Then they were going to let me know who will get General Shekhar and this. Uh, General Shekhar, uh, when you uh, were in Fort Core and uh, the Kargil conflict had already begun at the end of May 1999, and as uh, a senior uh, Core Commander, uh, you would have anticipated uh, this Chinese move. Uh, and uh, fortunately, as like General Devaram has now just said, that you were in Tawang. What were your first thoughts uh, when you heard that the Chinese are making a move uh, at Yangtze and at uh, the Nirala Pass? Uh, very rightly, you, you made a mention about anticipation. Right. I am glad, Nitin, you, Mr. Nitin, you made a mention on this. When the trouble started in Kargil, I was anticipating the Chinese will be up to some mischief. It was a purely a anticipatory threat analysis. You start anticipating, and if you anticipate correctly, you can predict also why they will be up to some mischief because. There was some process that we will have to shift our forces if required for my core sector 
all the way to Kargil. All the way to Kargil. Even our guns were being sent. And I am 200% sure that something must be going somewhere. Even when I was moving our guns towards the Kavang sector, we had taken into account the sweep of the satellites. When the sweep comes, we had given clear order to the battery commander. No force commander will speak to the battery commander. So we have to be very careful. So that our guns are not picked up and doing the same. The moment trouble started, before that I had done some my own homework, which are the top spots in the entire sector. Dundur was held very strongly. Pravaram would know that the Kulkarni who became the leader of Kulkarni, he was holding it there. Dundur was held properly. All was okay. Young say, to my way of thinking, was probably a soft bend. So I tried to find out had the Chinese been coming in that part sometime. And then I was told they are they've been coming for some time, they were going back. So I asked my brigade leader, Brigade Patania, suppose they come this side and they don't go back, then what happens? There was no answer. I thought there was another person, now it is coming into news. Langju was another place. So they were the hot <clears throat> belly, which I thought the Chinese will exploit. And sure enough, and sure enough, I had cautioned the DOC fight you then and Jetri to be very careful, very, very careful. I had full confidence in Gary Devaram. I knew P.D. Hanur was coming to the heaven. I had known him when I was a captain. He so come back from Sri Lanka. So I had no problem in that. But my problem was in case the Chinese start bulldozing the way on the pickets that they have been coming there every year and therefore they should be allowed to enter. Then what should be my response? So therefore, I have given strict order that there is no question of anybody coming to the territory now. If they have been coming for last 20 years, it is their problem about the problem of somebody else. When the first time I got the report, I used to read this situation report myself. There was a report that some Indian came after some time, two of the ladies probably started listening to this girl. And they stayed there for some time. They went back again and Ranur has told you what happened thereafter. I got my chief of staff, I got my BGS, I spoke to GOC, said, watch out, either it is today or it will be tomorrow. This probably is the advanced party of these people and they will try. And sure enough, next day, what happened? The right. reason being, I am mentioning to you, Mr. Gokhale, even today, such small things will give you the indication what the Chinese are up to. The aim of the Chinese out there to keep their entire core sector active so that no troops can be moved from the eastern sector to the northern sector, where the Kargil trouble was taking place. I was told, I was cautioned. To be ready. So I said, okay, fine. If that is a nice fight, you put on somewhere else. And the, secondly, the guns were moved. Thirdly, why carry trade is a problem? They thought this is the best time for them to open a another venue for them to get into things. First time after 1962, David will probably know, I showed a top secret signal that in case the Chinese don't behave, Fire for effect. The exact line is fire for effect. No more firing in the air or something of this sort. And the signal went to command headquarters. It went to army headquarters. It went to MO. And there was a hell to lose. How have you shown these orders? I do who will be responsible if the Chinese make an ingress into this territory, they cross over, who will be responsible? So I am the person who is holding this sector. Allow me to do what I want to do. Mr. Nambiar was the ambassador of India into China at that time. Right. Nambiar. Vijay Nambiar. Yes. From diplomatic sources. Mm -hmm. Chinese must have told them these chefs are up to some mischief. So I was asked, I said, let us do our job. Or you give us in writing. I was very tough. That if the Chinese make ingress, I will not be held accountable. 
If you can't give me, then let me do my job. And mm-hmm. that's how he went to Divistor. And P.D. Ranur was there. I used to sometimes speak to him. Normally the co-commander don't speak to the running master. That is not done. But I have taken the permission of the gate commander and the GOC that you don't mind. I am not crossing the channel of command, but I must know what is happening. I flew there a number of times. I landed at Yangtze. And I was sure. I met the company commanders also there. It was a very difficult of time. And Chinese were just hardly about 150 meters or maybe even less than that. Yes. Feeding his boys with one job, they have created an artificial barrier. And I had given strict orders to our boys also. In case if they cross, you just shoot. Don't wait for any orders. You just shoot. Exactly. Because one thing I had known, having been part of the negotiating team with China since 1993, as a brigadier and thereafter, having seen, after the peace and tranquility, Chinese respect toughness. Chinese respect power. If you put up, if you put to the pressure, they will work on you. When this first day thing that you described, after that, uh, every day would have been a battle of nerves and battle of attrition. It's like to us, uh, how you handle uh, the constant Chinese barrage and how did you keep up the morale of the troops? Uh, <clears throat> firstly, I just want to update you on the actual position uh, at the uh, first light on 8th of July. Uh, while they appear to withdraw slightly, but uh, as the core commander mentioned, they got deployed about 100 meters from there. The important point to note is the attempt to intrude through Mira Gap. There is a gap which is, as I mentioned, just next to Tangna. There, since we stopped them in the track, uh, my company commander and the program commander, then Lieutenant Bogart, were very aggressive. All the attempts made by them were foiled. In fact, uh, they resorted to physical force to prevent the invasion from taking place. And but having faced that, they realized they can't go through. But the next best thing that they could do was to keep put at that position. So at the end of the night, they continued to stay there and their defenses started coming up in that area. So now we were in a dilemma because the space, the you know, gap that is there is very narrow. So they have right. already picked up their position, taken up their position. So I asked my company, uh, that QRT uh, problem commander, as to what is that we can do. So he says, so there is no place at all. We can't occupy because they are, they are already there. So I said, you please go to the flank and see if there is any space available. So he, wa- he said, sir, there is just enough space to put one tent next to them. I said, okay, then you occupy. So it was not an eyeball to eyeball contact. It was, we became neighbors. That was the right. kind of uh, closeness uh, that we had to the right. LA right from the first night. And right. uh, continued till the end. And the next moment, once this happened, then we also took up positions. But a uh, few days later, again, my, one of my OPs who was deployed in the, uh, the death uh, from a height, he was able to observe. On the first light of 13, that is just after five days, five a days. large uh, force of uh, about a platoon strength had occupied the most dominating height in the immediate vicinity, that is 0.4862. Right. This uh, area where we were was around 4,500 feet. We saw that yeah. 4862. So that position was occupied, and that was uh, completely overlooking our Yangtze sector, including our depth location. So I was in a uh, dilemma as to what should I do. So therefore, uh, we, uh, I mean, since of course, I was there as a company, uh, as a battalion YC also earlier. And because of my fitness and because of my fondness, I had vacated the entire area well before the, uh, the incident took place. So I knew as to what is that we need to do. And accordingly, we occupied the shoulders of uh, on either side to uh, it is uh, to neutralize the advantage the PNA had gained by And thereafter, we ensure that they were at the receiving. So their, their PMT actions stopped when they initially occupied Mira Gap and subsequently 4862. Thereafter, it was our turn to be aggressive and it was our turn to make our action. So once this was done, 
with every day as you correctly mentioned we were in a hypotropical concentration so things could escalate at any point in time in mm-hmm. the meantime when this incident took place i was not very far away one night i was able to meet the young sir and were we able to then personally build up a rapport with troops and with my officers and men and ensure that the morale is high the morale was raised by the core commander and all the leaders of the channel but it was my task to ensure that it circulates down to the last man sure and that was done by constantly briefing them they were already well prepared we had already well rehearsed how we had our sops we knew the ground well and we knew as to what all can happen and as a result of that that knowledge that competence gives a lot of confidence to all ranks and right. the second thing was that we i had to be with them to live with them so that they know that the command is always there for them correct third we took various measures to ensure that comfort level increases mm-hmm. whatever i asked for from my brigade commander and up the channel they were immediately sent whether it was the weapon additional weapons several devices or the shelters you know arrangements for uh, lugging stores everything including movement of reserves using our own troops as uh, uh, fighting porters to fetch up things all of that uh, there was no question asked everything that i requested for was agreed to so as a result our preparation went up our and the comfort of our troops went up and since we were always together their morale remained high and That's i right. set certain examples for them mm-hmm. because it was such a tight situation i had to show that we how to remain aggressive there was no point in lecturing around it after having right. to <clears throat> brief them i took the risk despite my core commander and brigade commander not having me given permission to be to go to a height which was on the flank that was the point 5310 i see incident 5310 that was the glaciated area and i i was not able to make out as to what is their disposition what is the strength and what is their intent so we were i want to i want all right but beyond that what was happening we were unable to fathom and because right. we were face to face we had to avoid being detected and get at the same time climb that height So sure. fortunately, we were able to do that, and I didn't have to go far. I didn't even have to reach the uh, peak. Before that, I was able to see all that was uh, down below. The area depression, that is the one I told you, where the concentration of troops had taken place, that right. was visible. Fortunately, the weather was clear, and mm-hmm. again, fortunately, I had been issued with a video cam for the first time. Okay. So we were able to record that uh, that disposition. So mm-hmm. I could clearly make out the tent they uh, uh, were such that you could make out that Brandon Size Force had been deployed in that area, and there was a separate tent where a senior colonel was staying. I'm sure they would have given me permission to pick up that height. Mm-hmm. In that case, of course, would have been in the most dominating mm-hmm. position. So let let me ask uh, General Devavaram, then Brigadier Devavaram, uh, that uh, you know uh, the Chinese were obviously making their intent clear that they wanted to keep. Uh, the indian forces occupied uh, through this uh, kind of a stand off or a face off uh, so as uh, a, a brigade commander of a very crucial brigade in the tawang sector what were your thoughts about uh, the other parts of uh, your uh, area of uh, responsibility like uh, bongla like maybe lumpo all that where they were also moving that side or where was the concentration only in yansi and before covering the The aspect we were off for. I want to tell you the next day, that is on the eighth. Four commander was there. He said, "I want to go and see the gun position of Yangtze." Okay. So he called the CRT also to come. On the end road, we picked up a CO late marker. Then we did hello. We drove on an off-pipe track. I was driving the four commander, and we reached the Yangtze. Our question, Yangtze, we reached at the gun position. Long, long road, yes. That no problem. The transport is busy. The commander looked at the CRT and told him that I want the guns to be on the battery to be deployed here immediately. And uh, though the track was in a bad condition, the commander noted very clearly that I want the guns to be moved immediately. So within a matter of three days, the battery was deployed there, and the order the 
function helps to be created that ammunition was not the one first line and the additional reserves were also stopped there. And uh, when we returned back from the victory uh, of the Rumbo GG and came back, the Chinese had already contacted us on the hotline. They ordered the flag meeting in Pukla next day. So since it was a, a lefty journal of the Chinese army was attending, he deputed uh, the neighboring battalion of Maha. There was a Maraba Light Infantry Battalion, the Yankee person, one Maraba. Right? And yes. the CEO was on Sunday Hove. So we asked him, Sunday Hove, you attend the flag meeting and explain what all happened uh, here. And he ensured that, uh, that nothing, no fallback would take place. In the flag meeting, the Chinese protested that the Indian troops have. Uh, Used force against us, a bodily search test, our dragon legs were uh, confiscated, and our yacht were hit with sticks, and the yacht was bleeding. And this is not acceptable. And uh, tell the uh, Indian army to refrain from the activity and fall back to their original position. Of course, we also went down, son of Sanjay Holi, put his ground, and told them. Uh, whatever you have said, we will convey it to our head about it. As of now, there is no fallback. Okay. Then I would uh, also recollect one more incident which the core commander had ordered. The core commander told the CRT, I want the both of guns to be moved ahead. Both of guns were hidden across uh, Tela Pass. So he told him very clearly that the guns will be moved only during hours of darkness. You will start your move after last light. Before first light, you should be there in the composition and you should be fully confident. But unfortunately, it was actually half group of guns with the move, three guns. Two guns reached the position and one gun got stuck before uh, Sela Pass, and it was daylight. At that time, the Americans were covering this entire area with their satellite images. The board, then the secretary mentioned, yes, right. Okay. The Americans uh, took the imagery and they shared it with the Chinese. Probably the Chinese were there trying their front. And the Chinese put a diplomatic uh, protest that the Indian army has moved the uh, medium guns very close to the border. As for the kind of border peace and kind of agreement, the medium guns are supposed to be at a particular location and beyond that it cannot come. So this was resolved and subsequently the uh, they, for the medium regiment also a diplomatic protest was launched. And uh, the command headquarters, the army headquarters, the army headquarters, particularly the MO directorate asked me how the medium can go. No. It's such that this is uh, here to ask the core headquarters. The general uh, will give you the answer to this. But after that, the army headquarters never spoke to me on the medium head. And it was a result between the army headquarters and the command army. Uh, so right. Right. Uh, then, Jacob, sir, uh, you know, this is uh, one of the rare occasions after Wangum, and especially at a time when the Kargil conflict was uh, raging in the uh, heights of Kargil, Dras, and Batalik. Uh, was there uh, uh, pressure on you to uh, go slow or uh, stand down so that, you know, uh, you don't open up another front with the Chinese? Uh, would you have, uh, I mean, uh, they were all just mentioned and then how questions were asked, why the guns were moved. So what was your uh, you know, uh, planning for uh, any eventuality? Because the Chinese were posturing clearly uh, because they wanted to help their friends uh, uh, Pakistan. So what, what, what was going through your mind that time? Uh, Mr. Gogolay, what happened? Like to support the core, part of the core, component which prevented DGMO. And became our chief that time, so he was a of the area that time. But as uh, you know, the war of this mentioned, when we started moving our guard, I asked, can we defend the unsafe? And I got a meaningful silence. I understood. I understood the whole thing. I said, move the guns. And then the whole thing started. Why are you moving guns? What is the requirement? Then I had to be stuck. My command headquarters started asking me, the DGRT started asking, I said, Look, you have placed these resources at my disposal. You have given me a task to defend this territory. Now allow me to do. Don't expect me to be a small child of primary school. May I come in, sir? May I go? 
Because that is not happen. That is not happen. So if I was worried of one thing, it's a good way. And I am requesting to you, to this generation, the loss of territory in India is just not acceptable to the nation. That will hold good. And you are better aware, you have been to the doing it. The terrain in Arunachal Prashesh is much, much more tougher than what is in Ladakh. I am not trying to undermine anything. You have been to no. both the places. No. Can we imagine if the gunpowder cannot be used to it and the Chinese were up to their mischief, what would have happened? You know, Haru has just told you how you could do My next point on this issue, with your permission, I learned two lessons. First and foremost, first and foremost, there are limitations of technology application in mountains. The higher you are, the better you are. Even if you are 100 feet ahead, higher than your enemy, you have won the first round. Number one. Number two, as I mentioned, mountains each other get off. You know, Haru just mentioned to you, the spicy people, he took and he went to the five orbits of war. They were good enough. And if they were in enjoyment, they were ahead of the entire company with those five people. You have been, you are better way of the media, you are a backward expert. The battle of Muranam, the battle of Jaswan Sugar, the battle of Jaswinder Singh, gone. Seven people, eight people, ten people, and they attacked the Chinese. They butchered them with the people. So it is the location of the people on the height of the mountain. If you can dominate the area, you have won the first town. What will happen later on is one thing. If they were coming on me, if they were coming on me, you will go here. So I said, don't tell me anything what to do. You have given me, I was very tough. I knew I would be very much later on. In fact, General Malik has written about Yang Se in his book, Surprise into Victory. He should also be knowing that. My huh. next thing is, uh, my request to you is, even today, having heard General Haru and General Devavaran both, the battle in mountain will only be fought by Captain Major and another rest of the world. They are our cutting edge. They are our cutting edge. When you see Akupai Ridangla for these two, to be Chinese and taken by surprise, you never thought. So there are no places you can continue. I'm not going into the office now, so that's yes. not my job now. You have thought the thing. But based on the experience, there is enough scope for us hiding our area of interest. Area of interest. And Chinese will not be able to. These are the yes. lessons we should learn from the people. Because there is no answer. There will be many, I'm 200 percent sure, I'm 200 percent sure, I can predict today, Chinese will create problem for us in Atapena. They will create problem for us in Gongsu. They will create problem for us in Fish Lake. Why that you pass through, I think it's all these places. Right. And then, you are getting the resource, they are concentrating their troops. They are not coming there for Fish Lake. They may be having something of this sort. But these are the lessons we should talk. Even after 20 years, 21 years gap, from the episode of Yangtze, nobody talks of Yangtze. Yes. Nobody, people don't remember him. Uh, so therefore, I, uh, I, 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 all of you are speaking about Yangtze. Uh, let me, we are uh, approaching almost one hour mark, sir. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we must uh, get to the uh, conclusion now. So let me ask uh, General Halur. What lessons we could draw from that uh, episode in Yangtze and uh, juxtapose it to the current situation? If you can be a little brief in the way. Yeah. Uh, firstly, as the core commander has rightly mentioned, all the points that he has said at a strategic level, the lessons that we learned are equally valid today and are equally valid on data. So that is one part. Now, at a tactical level, at the battalion level, the lessons that we drew is first and foremost, is the surveillance, our preparedness, that is very critical. But unless we are able to detect, unless we are able to discern what enemy's intentions are, uh, we will be found wanting. It has happened a number of times when I did target or any other place. So that is a equally valid, which should not be brushed aside. It is a it is vigilance, uh, vigilance always based. 
what were your takeaways from that incident? Uh, the one of the longest standoffs in the uh, history of uh, uh, India and China on the line of actual control. Uh, if I if if I can have your thoughts on that. And I will uh, like to cover one incident in this. The perception between the army headquarters, the troops who are actually on the ground actually is the first. The physical and the medical fitness of troops, officers is very essential when you are deployed in the military. Because when the day the young set is of took place, the commanding officer, though he was in the first stage of acclimatization, he moved, he walked for continuously for maybe around 12 or 14 hours. This is one of the things we require. Then the administration and logistics. Ramsey was maintained, air maintained, and uh, that time we had only the four parka, and the four parka used to receive those commands and those publicity, and our photographs and our videos used to go to the higher headquarters. There is a requirement to provide take of the art ECC, that is it. Extreme uh, uh, cold floating, so our troops were deployed about 14 to 20. So that is another uh, thing which I would like to highlight. And uh, these are the main things uh, which happened in the Arctic Right. And uh, it uh, boosted the morale of the troops. And uh, all the higher headquarters, particularly the core commander, also landed there in the then the company commander. And the JCO and appreciated them for whatever they did. And uh, rightly, the company commander, at the time of the young major, was uh, awarded Sena Medal. The JCO, who we have CEO mentioned, Dondra, was also given a Sena Medal. The CEO himself uh, won a VSM. And uh, the JCO, other JCOs, and the uh, general officers, the chiefs, and the army commanders. So their election was recognized. The air yes. election was recognized. That was a great moral work for the troops to come in, to deliver in the coming year. This is company commander over the young company commander then. He stood in his hands support for command of the brigade. It's, 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 it's a great feeling for uh, the desire and wishes that he commands a brigade and commands it. So that he can be able to handle the things very absolutely. Hard. Because ground experience is so important. I'm grateful to all of you actually for bringing uh, this uh, very little known uh, incident and episode uh, of this uh, 93 day standoff at Yangtze. Uh, this will be a great morale booster to the current uh, deployment that are happening across the line of actual control, across the McMahon line. And as all of you know, uh, all of your veterans, uh, this kind of a uh, talk and a discussion uh, really inspires the current leadership and uh, current uh, young officers and uh, men uh, who are battling the weather and also are facing the Chinese, uh, especially in Ladakh. So I'm grateful to all of you for sparing your time and uh, sharing your experience. Uh, this will uh, actually uh, be, uh, I think, the first time that we are hearing such details about the Yangtze incident. Thank you very much for your time and uh, thank you very much uh, for joining this program on Strat News Global. I'm Nitin Gokhale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.